progress.
We've got another minute or so. Well, we're very backlit here. Yes. Hi, everybody out there. <laughs> Just move around. We got different lighting. Very auspicious. Maybe put the lights on, actually. So you can just move the air side. And then. Yeah. Okay, I think we've got everyone probably who's coming in who's going to come in. Um, you all can hear us all right on the Zoom, yeah? Yeah, like thumbs up or something? Yes. Okay. Um, so I'm Deborah Ross. I, I'm chair of Rochester's Eclipse Task Force. In my other life or in my real life, what I do is I'm publisher of a marketing and media platform called kidsoutandabout.com. And with a 20-year-old network of websites that uh, show in 45 regions in the U.S. and Canada what there is to do that's family-friendly uh, going on. So I think in websites is one of the reasons why I'm running one of these sessions. This is my colleague, Peter Platt, who owns Accountable Digital which is an SEO marketing, uh, an SEO, how do you say this? A, an SEO digital marketing, digital marketing agency, uh, oh. whom we've used, but also I'm, I'm on various business groups with Peter and I love working with him because he, A, knows a huge amount about how to get exposure for your business on the web. And two, is really, really generous with the kind of information that he offers. So I tapped him to help us with a kind of very practical checklist um, and a sort of a sense of what you as an organization that is looking to either promote your region or your business or some combination thereof um, to get it visible uh, and what to do and at what point in advance so that you're well prepared to take, uh, to make sure that everybody who needs to know about you does so. So I'm gonna turn this over to Peter. Um, okay. And the other, actually the other person I wanted to introduce real quick is Rebecca LeClaire who is also our colleague. She is. Uh, she had been on uh, the a NBC affiliate here uh, as an anchor in Rochester for 29 years, Very good. and now owns a, a communications firm that helps with social media um, and marketing and specifically helps businesses formulate what they're doing so that traditional media love it, grab it, understand it, that it makes it easy to get that kind of media exposure. So we're going to be doing some pointing at Rebecca for some answers to questions and sort of just saying, click, go, and we'll talk. So thank you very much. Excellent. Well, that's good. All right. Well, hi, everybody. I am having two days of eclipseness in my head. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, it's been great to be part of this and kind of see everything that's going on, see all this advanced planning because uh, the people who plan in advance are going to be the ones who are successful. And so, you know, I think that's, there's a lot of opportunity. That's what we're really going to talk about here today. And the, um, yeah, I like to start off with, hopefully it's okay. Um, so I mentioned this yesterday. Uh, this is an article on uh, Travelocity written in 2017 that says, here are the eight cities with a front row seat to the 2024 so that was in 2017 that was written. Um, it's out there. There's already content on the web about what's happening. And actually this morning, because I finished my desk at the last minute, um, I searched for hotels for Eclipse. And Drury Hotels has a page out there that is talking about hotels for the 2024 Eclipse. It's not a paid ad, it's an organic listing. They have already stepped ahead putting content out there. So for the people in this room who are probably thinking about making hotel reservations already, 
not everybody else was a couple of years from now, <laughs> but uh, it's out there and that activity is happening. If, if everybody on Zoom could mute themselves, that'd be great. Talk to the mic. If you could mute yourself, if you're on Zoom, that'd be great because we're getting a little feedback. All right. Talk more into the mic. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I won't look at you guys as much anymore. I'll look over this way to try and I assume it's the mic on your laptop. That we're yeah, it's the only one we got. All right. Great. So, you know, just that. Um, I also took a look at Google Trends. This is a fun tool. If you ever want to lose a day of time, go into Google <laughs> Trends. You can look up all kinds of things. But this is traffic for um, back in 2017. For the United States, I did January 1st, uh, 2015 to 2018. Um, what did people search for? Eclipse Hotel and best places to see the eclipse. Um, interesting spike there, October 2017. Everybody knows about that. Um, but here a year prior, there was another spike. So people are searching a year prior. What you need to be doing now is getting ready for not two Aprils from now, but next April. There's gonna be a spike. There's also, you can't really see it from there, some little squiggles of blue lines, which is people who did searches for Eclipse Hotels. So there's audience searching for that all the time coming ahead. Yeah, there's gonna be a big spike right at the last minute. We all know it. We're doing as much as we can to prepare, but the reality is if you get there early, you're gonna have the chance to own that space and be out there. So when we start thinking about this, and by the way, the, this timeline, these slides, these are all shared. I'll, I'll talk to you about where you can get them afterward. But when we start thinking about what your business, what your organization, what your university, what you need to do, everybody's timelines a little differently. But when we think about the kind of one to two years out, you wanna start publishing your offerings. Spurry Hotel is doing it already, right? You wanna start getting some content out there. Um, ideally, you wanna start collecting emails. You wanna start getting in touch with people and getting control over them. You don't wanna let the social media platforms own your audience, you wanna own them. Um, and start things like organic search. That's how Drury Hotels has got there. Doesn't make sense for them to pay for that now, but as they start thinking about it, you can really jump ahead with things like that. And then at six months, you need to start doing things in the social media world. At three months, you've got promotions, you're doing more paid advertising. At 30 days, your advertising is gonna go up. You really wanna be out there. The week of, you've got all kinds of things you need to do. And don't forget after. You know, we've all talked about the great exodus, people leaving, jumping in their cars as soon as it's over, as soon as the sun comes back out, they're out of here. Um, I mentioned yesterday, you might wanna build some content for people to read while they're stuck in traffic. That could be an interesting component, but the after effects of the results of people who are coming, you want people to come back again. Your community got a chance to bring people in. How do you leverage that beyond? And so it's really important that you think through all these stages and kind of build out a plan. The other aspect that's really important in this is thinking about how people make decisions, what the visitor journey is. And you kind of start with this idea that people start dreaming, you know, like, hey, I'm, Eclipse is interesting. Let me find out about it. They start to, you know, they just get this idea they want to maybe travel. Then they start to learn about it. They start doing more research. They're coming online. They're looking at different things. Then they're planning. They're getting ready to start booking hotels, figure out where to go. Then they're going to actually book and engage. Then they're gonna experience the eclipse for three minutes um, and the whole day and three days beforehand and not right after. Um, and then they're gonna share it. People need different messaging throughout their process. If I've got somebody dreaming and I start to tell them that they could get a hotel room for $29.99 or whatever my price is, they don't care. They're still dreaming. They need different types of information. So you wanna think about your content what you're putting out there, whether it's your site or in other places, to have that message where they can really experience what's important to them and be able to adjust their way through. Um, so you wanna think about, you know, when do they need that information? 
what tools they're using. You know, are they on Google? Probably, that's where they're starting. Um, they're finding places. They're coming in from different links. Uh, when you get down into the day of, they're using Maps and Yelp and things like that. So there's a lot of different tools that change. Um, and so they wanna find it different places. And you also wanna make sure that whatever content you put out there is ready for them to share and use, you know, because if they can talk about their experience, you know, we've all seen those photos of somebody who's at the zoo and sticking their head in a little zoo cheaper, you know, cut out the, you know, things like that that encourage people to say, oh, I'm, I'm having fun, I'm sharing, I'm here making those things available, putting them online so that people can share easily is a great way to help amplify your message. So how do you do all this? Um, the first part is this idea of developing your marketing plan. And so I have some printed out. I went old school, I printed some stuff today. So, um, and this is, um, there's a website where you can get this file too and things like that. But the idea of, sort of building an action plan. You know, a lot of us probably just in this last two days have started to think about what do we want to say about the eclipse? How does it affect what we do, who we are, what our organization does? You have to build that out. You have to think of that now so that, you know, because you can't get content out until you know what you're talking about. So the first step is this idea of building an action plan. And we're, I'm not gonna go through the individual details of that today. Um, that's on here, it's pretty straightforward on different steps and things to think about, but it's really defining what the eclipse means to you. You might look at it and go, it has nothing to do with us. I'm not gonna put it as part of my business. Or this could be a core component of what we're doing. Um, we're a restaurant in that market in, you know, in totality. We want to do something special. We're outside totality. Well, we're maybe we don't care. Depends on what you are, what your business looks like, how you might look at that. So the idea of building the action plan, getting that done, that's really what's happening now, what you should be starting now. And then the actual engaging the audiences, the phase two stuff is more likely to come in in that last six months and then the lead up to it, but there are pieces and things that you wanna start earlier to get out there. And so with that, you know, a lot of times people will start off and think about their website. Oh, I need to put content on here, or I need to um, build a page. Um, or they'll think, uh, let's put this on Facebook. Let's put this on LinkedIn. Let's put this on whatever social platforms are important to you, different places. There's a lot of different components. You can't just look at your website and say, that's it, or just your social strategy or just your search strategy. All those pieces need to come together. So when you're thinking about it, you've got those components. Uh, yesterday's resources discussion, there are so many resources out there. Don't get caught up in, oh, I have to build this tool. Actually start to look at the other resources around. You may have an opportunity to build community with people who you'd normally consider competitors. I'm a restaurant. Oh, I have another, you know, I have friends who own six other restaurants. We can become this community of restaurants that push everybody to our events during the eclipse because we've started to work together. So I think there's a real opportunity to look at how you can build your own community in new ways that you might not have thought of in the past. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you don't want to rely on Facebook to own your audience and tell your story. You know, they showed us some people sometimes based on whatever they decide. Google puts you in their rankings based on whatever they decide, right? And so it's important that you really look through and find ways to own your audience, get people that want to talk to you and be in touch with you. Uh, and then, you know, starting early, um, we'll talk through a lot of these different uh, strategies. But one of the first things that you really want to do is get some content out there. So this little website, eclipse.accountabledigital.com, I built two days ago. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't go through my IT department. I built this in Squarespace. Um, I built a separate piece of content that talks about, are you ready for the solar eclipse? Um, 
I've got links to all these things, this document that was just handed out to what I said yesterday, to a marketing timeline, planning checklist. This is all here now. It didn't cost a lot of money. It was easy to put out there. I know, Deb, you've done a bunch of other ones too. Like, Yeah, I um, hope they can hear me on here. Um, so, you know, I one of the things that I've done for the last 20 years is I hate when people are beholden to sort of bottlenecky, gatekeepy kinds of people, especially in tech, right? So I, I mean, I really hate that. So I sort of dedicate a lot of what I do to helping people overcome those barriers. So there's a lot of small businesses, in fact, that rely on their webmaster when they can find him, sorry, him, um, him, uh, to make that, and then they have to pay a lot of money to get any kind of updates. They don't have the direct control. It drives me nuts. So the, what I've done actually, I, and Trish, um, I gave a talk to the Missouri task force that Trish recorded and has online um, for how to, in the case of GoDaddy especially, go buy a domain and within, and I did it in 40 minutes, um, we set up a Solar Fest website for, specifically for uh, Perryville Solar Fest um, that Trish now has access to and can go on and swap out the content and change the copy and all of that. And you can do it really fast. So those places where you can buy domains like GoDaddy or Wix or Squarespace, they have built really easy to use wissy wig, um, you know, ways of doing your own damn self. Okay, there's no excuse. Yes? Yeah. Uh, they also have a square online. Store. Square so online. And not for profit discounts for buying the domain itself, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. So there, and so Trisha will get that link and we'll put it both on Peter's website at what'd you do call it? Eclipse Eclipse. Eclipse. Eclipse.accountabledigital.com so that you have access to that how to. I did it really freaking fast. You're gonna have to pause. But still, I take you from not knowing how to do this at all to being able to do it. And then you, you, you're the master. You're, the, you're, you're in control of your own content. Um, so yeah, sorry. That's, it's a button that you push with me and I talk about it. So. Yeah, no, that, that's great. And I, I, you know, it's really important because that often becomes the stumbling block. I can't get my content out there. I, I remember I one time was working for a very large client, had a product release that the web department said, oh, we can't launch it that week because we're doing an email upgrade. Like this is a national product release and we're putting it up because the email upgrade, that didn't make sense. So, you know, think about the priorities, find ways around it. Um, it may be just as easy to add pages to your existing website, add slash Eclipse on the end. I did this just as an example to show, oh, you can create a subdomain, build it all on your own and connect it out there very yeah. easily. And actually I'll just jump in really quickly. So. You can do that, but then also buy a domain and then just redirect that domain to that place, right? So um, Laughing Gold Chocolate. So if you guys were in the planetarium last night, you met Lindsay. She gave you delicious ethically sourced chocolate to taste, but they're also doing a chocolate mold, right? So it's going to be an eclipse mold, which is customizable by region. And so we own, to we now I, but they will soon, own totalitychocolate.com which will redirect to the page on their website that they control, right? Just to make it really easy to brand Totality Chocolate, but also then they have control over it. So. And if you eat 95%, the calories don't count, right? Because <laughs> it's so you know, it doesn't matter. So. I like <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, so I had to do that. <laughs> um, so uh, the other thing, you know, the importance of blinking and sharing is one of the things we talked a little bit about community. Um, Google's the center of all things online nowadays. It's a reality. Um, love them, hate them, whatever. Um, there's a lot that goes on with Google. But one of the things that most people don't understand is that Google's original algorithm was written based on how college professors write papers which is the more citations you get, the more credible your, paper, your content is. And that is really its core foundation. So if you can get people to link to you, if you can get other, you can link to others, 
linking can really help your rankings. And this is pulled from Google's how search results work. It says, one of the several factors we use to help determine this is understanding other prominent websites that link or refer to your domain. If you get out there early and start getting links, that can be an incredibly important part of what you're doing. Um, I will also, just because you mentioned nonprofits, um, Google does have a nonprofits program. If you're not using Google Grants account, it's a pain to use, but you can get up to $10,000 a month of free Google AdWords advertising using a Google Grant. If you're 501c3, um, it's out there. It can really help drive traffic and do some really interesting things for you. We did it. It's awesome. Yeah. It's, um, you have to learn how to use it well because yeah. it's um, most people who get them spend $10,000 a year. Um, if you work it right, you can spend ten thousand dollars a month. So, or, um, it's a really uh, it's a great program. So, if you haven't looked at it and you're a nonprofit, look at Google for nonprofits. Or talk to Peter. Well, that's true. He'll, he'll ask you <laughs> any questions. Yep. Um, so, speaking of Google, you know they have organic listings. So, I did things to do with kids in Rochester, New York, top twenty place to take kids is from kids out and about. Of course, right? Um, but down here we have Strong Museum of Play in Highland Park. Uh, we don't have RMSD, so. <laughs> but that's that's about you having your local listing. Google business pages, even if you don't have a local type business, make sure you set one up. It is one of the key drivers to most of the websites that we work with nowadays can be more important than SEO sometimes to get you ranked is making sure your business page is listed within the Google My Business pages, getting it out there because it will start to show up. And of course, there's paid ad side of things too, which can be a really effective way to do things. It's also a really great way to spend a lot of money really fast. So you have to be careful with it, but there are some really interesting things you can do because where else can you get in front of people who are actively searching for you at that moment? And I guess part of that, whether you spend that depends on the return that you're expecting. Right. Right. So if you're charging $100 a car for a full day experience, it's a really, really different thing than if you're a park that's charging nothing and maybe wants to sell some glass, right? Google AdWords, can do it in that case at home. Yeah. I mean, there, there's always ways you can use it, always ways you shouldn't. So. Uh, so this next section, I wanted to just high level some top level strategies about some of the different topics you can do within social media, different ways to do it. Um, you know, I went on Facebook, did Eclipse 2024, found the Rochester site, did Eclipse 2024 on Instagram and found tons of Eclipse 2024, Eclipse.24. Those names are out there. They're being bought already. Um, there's a lot of that activity. Um, one of the important things to remember about social media is that when you do posts, you primarily talk to people who already know you. It's not necessarily about amplifying your audience, but more engaging the people that you talk to frequently. So um, that can really help you, you know, kind of get tighter with your fan base. And particularly if you're introducing new Eclipse content that you haven't had before, it's a great way to let the people who already love you know about it and give them a chance to share. Um, on the flip side, you can use ads within Facebook and Instagram to, again, reach new people, bring people in based on very targeted uh, metrics and things like that. Um, it's a really great way to get people to engage. You have to be careful not to be too intrusive. Uh, my favorite example of this is you know, when people first started doing social media marketing, it was kind of the equivalent of, you know, four people standing together at a cocktail party, you know, down at the Strasbourg last night, right? And somebody walking up going, I like Reese's peanut butter cups. And everyone's like, what? And we're like, <laughs> what? Why, why'd that come into my conversation? So you want to be part of the yeah. discussion, fit it in. So don't be too intrusive, but encourage people to share out what you put out there because that's how you'll amplify your audience. And then contests on social media can be a really great way to get people to engage, particularly Instagram. If you get people sharing photos and things like that, they will give you more information. They'll get in touch with you. So there's some really neat um, tactics that you can use with these. One caveat, Facebook is for old people. The <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. 
Dev, Dev's more on Instagram. But no, I, I, Instagram has Facebook. Well, you know, parents and grandparents. Parents, let's say parents. I'll just say parents, not grandparents. But, but um, it used to be the number one goal of social media efforts was we want to get more likes. People don't like pages much anymore. It's not the thing to do unless there's a really good reason. If there's content that says, oh, I want to come back and see this frequently, that's how you'll get likes. So don't start a social media program going, we're going to get more likes. Um, nobody makes money on likes that I know of. You need to have an audience and people you want to talk to. Do you have a question? Uh, so as you say, um, I'm, not, I'm not going to claim that Facebook is for old people. But I will claim that a lot of very young people, 23 and under, as you say, are not on Facebook. Um, they may be on Instagram. The big one that I haven't really had anyone talk about all weekend is TikTok. Mm -hmm. So um, TikTok now gets more daily hours played on YouTube. Yep. Um, it's massive, wow. especially like under 24s. Yep. Um, and you really can, you can advertise on TikTok like Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can target specific areas. If, if, yep. Well, Catch an area you want to attract to your event. Um, and it, unlike Facebook and Instagram, it isn't just pushed to people who follow that account already or like that account. You can push it to people who think will be interested. Yep. Um, you are at mercy of like the algorithm. Yep. Um, I've tried a couple of times on TikTok, a couple of times very unsuccessful, one time relative success. Um, but I think it's a massively underutilized thing, not just for planning, but sort of communicating that science as well. Like NASA, ESA, NSF, they're, they're not on TikTok, they're on Facebook, Instagram. That's just not where the are. Right. Oh, yeah, well, and that's, I, I didn't. Did the NASA person oh. object back there? No. Yeah, just for the audience, NASA says they're not allowed on TikTok. Yeah. Uh, Wait, what did you say? Where's the Oh, because the Chinese company. Yeah. Could you say that? Just repeat what she was saying. Yeah, so we're just saying that Reels on Facebook and Instagram offer the same similar type capabilities. Um, don't forget Snapchat. Snapchat still works too. Uh, what about Reddit? Uh, Reddit is great for um, certain types of communities to, to have a conversation with and engage your audience. So um, Do you have to already be converted in order to be on Reddit about a particular topic or does Reddit yeah, Well, they have, there's a variety of different things. I've, I've run campaigns on all of them. So I can, you know, depending, we. Um, I would think for the science community and things, there can be some really great things with Reddit to really engage people that could be very effective. Um, so there, um, a lot of this is understand the tools. Like I said earlier, who, what does your audience use? Where are they engaging? What are they looking for in those environments? Because on TikTok, I'm looking for something much different than I'm looking for on Instagram. And I'm engaged in a different way. And, you know, you have to really do some work to make a video great to get attention on TikTok. Um, not to say it can't be done, but it's it's a different level of work than sharing a post of an image. So that's that's one of the things. To learn. So where does Twitter stand? Um, <laughs> Twitter Twitter is a great way to engage the media. So that's that's the primary place where people really use. Twitter nowadays is that the media tends to follow Twitter very closely. So if you want to get coverage and things like that, Twitter can be a really good component because every reporter I know has, you know, very active Twitter accounts. They follow a lot of things. They're looking at that as a way to get new stories and stuff. So that's one of the places, um, you know, Twitter was almost dead in before the previous administrations. Um, that ramped it back up. It got a lot of attention. It became a political minefield. So you have to be careful about what you um, message out there. Yeah, yeah. The, the price for Twitter, I've heard, it's really hard. Which is, Twitter is a game everyone plays every day, and the goal is to not be the main character. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Twitter is a game everyone plays, but not be the main character. Um, 
Uh, you know, I did, I put LinkedIn here from a B2B perspective. I found a post here, you know, mark your calendars two years from today, April 8th, 2024 from someone, you know. The Great Lake Science Center. Yeah. Ooh, so yeah. people are sharing already. It's out there. If you have a business to business audience, LinkedIn is a great way to talk to businesses, to get in touch with other businesses, to get your messaging out to them. So that's, it's an important social aspect and the B2B side of things. Different kind of engagement. Um, one of the things they do have is a really neat um, ad format called lead ads, where basically you can put up content and if they want it, they click a button, it gives you their entire LinkedIn profile. And so you can contact the person afterward. It makes it easy for them to get in touch. Information offers work great there so that if you need to build up you know, contacts in the B2B world that you want to be able to reach out to and engage with, adding some content there about how to prep for your Eclipse plan or whatever could be a really great way to get um, things out there. Uh, also, you know, got to mention all the local apps, particularly when we get to that big spike at the end where everybody's looking local. Um, Yelp, you know, every restaurant I know hates Yelp but loves the traffic they get from us. So it's a love-hate relationship. Uh, next door is a little bit more for personal services, you know, household services, community things. Um, Google My Business, as I mentioned, you want to make sure those listings are up. Those, each of your businesses and organizations have different ways that local activity might be important to you. Look at what they are. The local news is one of those places that you want to pay attention to. And I remind everybody, um, monitor and respond to your reviews. Even if someone says they love you, tell them thank you. We love you too. Um, when somebody says something bad, don't yell at them. Tell them, I'm sorry something happened. Let's talk about it offline. Get the conversation off. Be responsive. Even if somebody has a bad experience with you, don't try to brush it under the rug. Try to address it and don't inflame them because it'll get worse for you at a, a whole bunch of different levels. Um, email's still a thing. So anti-TikTok, right? TikTok's the newest thing. Email's the thing that was one of the first things we did online. Um, I picked Deb's newsletter um, because email's the one place where you really control the audience. You know, these are people you own. It's contacts you have. You can't download your Facebook paying list. You can't get those other lists. You want to have some control over the audience you talk to. But just saying sign up for your newsletter isn't enough. I'm not going to. But I'll sign up for Dev because it tells me, oh, every Thursday morning, so I'm getting it once a week. I know that. I'm going to get news about things to do for, with kids. If that's interesting to me, I will sign up for it. If it just said sign up for the newsletter, I'm not going to. Um, and I know, Deb, you spent a lot of time writing it, so I thought maybe you could just kind of talk about where it fits in your marketing. Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, I mean, that's we the fact of us owning that, that that's all we own. If, if, if Google decided we were horrible and stopped sending visitors to us, well, our, our you know, number of visitors to the site will go down. But once you own an email, you own them until they unsubscribe. I mean, unless they unsubscribe. Um, then and and your job is to continually provide them with updated, engaging content that makes them feel that it was worthwhile for them to spend their time reading your newsletter, right? So that's been our like philosophy for forever. It's also got to be well written. As soon as it stops being well written, it stops. The like, people will unsubscribe or just not. So we we are very very careful about that. The other thing I'll say about it is we we do pay for advertising on Facebook to get people to sign up for the newsletter. So, and we offer something of value like 101 day trips in San Antonio or Salt Lake City or San Jose. Um, and, and then they, they give you the email address to sign up for the newsletter on the way to getting that thing. That's the only thing we'll spend advertising on. When you are doing this, we've been able actually to get it down in sort of early in the summer to about 20 cents per sign up, which is amazing. Um, and it's because you're already offering them something of value and then giving them something else trusted that they care about, not hype, not crap, not advertising. So if you can think of a way to continually engage people in a newsletter, that the Facebook to newsletter strategy is actually a pretty good one. 
Um, so, yeah. So uh, let's see, I think I have uh, one last slide before we kind of take more questions, but also wanted to, you know, just give people reminders. Online advertising can be a great thing. You know, everybody thinks banner ads are cheap and stuff like that. Can be a great way to get out there. It's important to recognize that these platforms work in different ways. Banner advertising and video ads and things like that can be a great way to build awareness. Nobody clicks on banner ads. Anybody here click on banner ads? Nobody ever admits to it. Less than half a percent. You know, so it's always very low click-through rate, but it's great reach and can be very inexpensive to get out there. So it's a great way to get people to know something's happening. Um, social ads tend to be more likely when people have moved a little further in their journey. They're not likely to respond to something. They don't go to Facebook to look for something. They, you know, they're just kind of on Facebook. It can be a great way to get your messages out. Um, and then search is usually thought of as the bottom of the funnel. But I want to, you know, talk about that visitor journey that we started with at the beginning of this, where, you know, somebody who types in the word eclipse, um, I don't think any of us would search on eclipse right now. We all know like much more about it. But typing in the word eclipse is that first dreaming, like, oh, when is it? What, you know, what's going on? You know, that those kind of high level. Maybe eclipse 2024. Oh, wait, I've learned when it is. I'm starting to learn a little bit more. I'm starting to search about totality. Um, Eclipse Hotel. Oh, I've moved down. I'm closer to wanting to do something. All those searches happened on Google or maybe Bing, <laughs> um, you know, a little bit out there, about 10% on Bing. Um, and, but as they go through that process, that can be three minutes, three hours, three weeks, three months that somebody's working through that process. And so you want to be able to think about those different things and have content. So Drury Hotels has figured out that somebody typing Eclipse Hotel, they want them to find that now. And they have a page that's talking about the 2024 Eclipse. They don't have the October 23, which I thought was interesting because it definitely said 2024 in their, their page. So they've built a page about that, figuring there's going to be a lot of travel coming. Um, but all those different things you want to be thinking about and think about a user's intent as they come through the process. So I'm going to put it on the last slide here, which is just, you know, as I mentioned, eclipse.uncountabledigital.com, this deck, that sheet, the timeline, my notes from yesterday's um, cat are all there. Um, happy to help anybody talk about anything on there. Deb, do you want to scan through the... Um, uh, um, the chat comments in here. Sure, Just I'll be happy to. I know there were a bunch um, of them. And, and then if anybody has questions or things you want to ask about, um, I wanted to leave time to just kind of have open discussion or thoughts about um, where things are headed. And uh, while I'm looking at the chat, um, Rebecca, if you have a second to think, to jump into your media hat, right? Your TV media hat. What are the media looking for online now? What will they look for in six months? What will they look for in a year? What will they look for? Like, what is it that they are looking for? Because that's a separate, you know, Peter mentioned that, but um, uh, be useful to know. media, not science-based? Right, no, no, like local media, you know, like the stuff that you know about. Right now? No. Yeah, nothing. Nothing, right? For right now, because it's not in their awareness, it's not timely. Uh, one year out, that's your big next push. Well, you could do something with the annual, but like, you know, one year, April 2023. So you got to give them time. Like I would say, the week before, they need to reach out to all their local stations and, and, um, and get them aware and have an event. Yep. And I, I can see, I know Deb's already talked about it. Like, you go to a location to do the show. That's where the sun is going to be on that day. I mean, it's pretty obvious, but it's got to be visual. Everything has to be visual. And we talked about the resources have to be basic knowledge for like a sixth grader. <laughs> so that, that any reporter who has 10 minutes just to read it is going to understand and be able to kind of the information. And then, of course, I think as you get closer, um, you know, we talk about one year out, you do the six months. But the three months leading up to it, you have to offer constantly different ideas and localize. 
you got to find a local person who's the expert or a local person affected by it. And everything has to have visualization to it. And if you've already got all those resources that have the visuals from the science end of it, then you just need to have a location where you're bringing the media where say, hey, let's go to this um, business and show you that they made those light sound boards. Or, you know, like that would be a great story to show people a megaphone, you know, or what, anything that there's visual and activity. Okay, thanks. Um, so just a couple questions from the, the chat. Do you think a new domain is better than adding a subdomain to your current website? Um, what I always tell people is that, you know, building a brand is hard. Try building two, cost twice as much, take twice as long. So if you've got a good core brand, I think having a subset makes more sense. It's easier to do. Um, that said, if you're doing something unique and special, a special eclipse test that doesn't exist, creating something new is okay. But it depends really, if you have a solid, well-known brand, leverage that. You've got a great toehold and use that to go further. And we have a comment also that says from someone, I think subdomains are better if it links to other aspects of your pages as it can drive traffic to from your other content. Does that make sense? Do you guys know what a subdomain is? Like that, you, I mean, not everybody yeah. does, so. Yeah. Before the dot, after the slash. That, you know, <laughs> a page on your site is to you slash something, subdomain is, you know, eclipse dot, whatever is a, a great one. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's also a comment like that's uh, important for mobile devices and people who want what they want with little effort, but that brings up another issue of ADA compliance. So can you just talk a little bit about accessibility and websites and things like that? Yeah, so the um, the ADA laws were written in 1986. The web didn't really exist. It did, but not for most people. I mean, I built my first website in 93, so it was, wasn't too far off. But the ADA laws don't specifically address um, websites. That said, the courts are trying it. Domino's lost a big case about it. Um, if you have a site that is public facing, has a lot of content for users, I encourage you to look at ADA options. Um, I do a lot of work with UserWay, which is a really great application you can put on top of a website and get ADA compliant very quickly. It gives you things like, um, you know, speech readers for the you know, text readers. It gives you dyslexia fonts. It gives you a lot of different kind of capability. Um, ADA is going to continue to be tested in the courts. Um, we're going to see that come up more and more. Um, might as well tag on to that privacy. And um, you know, in Europe, the GDPR rules about what you can collect, how you collect it. Um, they are out there. California has one, a Consumer Protection Act. So it's starting to come in the states. It's not a federal law yet. Um, probably won't be for a while, but we're starting to see other states do that. So privacy, um, accessibility, um, inclusion. We spent a lot of time talking about that today. It's a really good step to make and you know take advantage of and help people get through the content they need and find what they're looking for. The chat has been busy. So it's important. Someone points out that it's important to own your business on Google, on, on your own Google page. So like just because others could try to get it illegitimately. So can you just say something just a little bit about that? Um, I think that's related to Google My Business and yeah. having that business page out there for your business, claiming it, owning it, um, doing things like putting up pictures. Um, you know, I've, my Google My Business page doesn't get a lot of activity, but I've had one for a couple of years. And when you search for Accountable Digital, there's a whole panel on the left that shows how to get to my office and what our hours are and all that kind of stuff. Related, going on a certain social media network popular enough usually for your business. Right, that's what that was just saying in the chat, right? That that someone else could claim that. Um, where can I put in the chat? Where do we find ADA compliance info? Where's a good place to go? Um, I I really like UserWay. That's the tool. UserWay.com. Yeah, and they um, they have a really great platform. That um, there there are a lot of providers out there, but there's one that I've been working with for a couple of years, and they're um, per, works particularly well with WordPress sites. It's a nice tie-in for that. Um, and it's a, you know, they're 
but that's that's probably one of the best places to look. I think as, as a reference, I you know, there's other people to consider, so feel free to look at whoever, but they're the ones that we've aligned with on our sets. Um, okay, that's uh, there was some desire for us to use a better microphone. Sorry, people. Um, it's just it's just what we got. Um, the there was one other thing. Oh, there was a, a very vigorous TikTok debate also in the chat. Um, about, uh, you know, some people have used it really effective for educating and informing, like scientists are using it. Um, others aren't allowed to do it. Um, I think that was, yeah. You know, yeah. some people like the reels and features on Instagram and, and Facebook. Some people hate them and want to get rid of them. This is fun. Uh, yeah. And somebody really loves TikTok as successful for first time users. And the, they say the differentiator in making it effective is authenticity rather than high quality produced video, yeah. which makes, yes. And humor, I, humor. Yeah. Humor on One, TikTok, one important right. thing too, um, the most important thing in video is actually audio. People will watch a bad video if it sounds okay. They will not watch a perfectly executed video if it sounds horrible. Um, yeah, audio, yeah, really get the microphone, get a better microphone. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, uh, right kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, you know, but that is an important aspect. Yeah. I am going to repeat that just because you guys couldn't hear it there on Zoom, and I'm not going to do as good a job as you just did. But uh, but uh, the 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 comment is that you ask as you are presenting to people as you're reaching out to them you ask where they are um and i can't even repeat the fantastic example from nasa where like a congressional aides they found out that they were using youtube shorts yep and nasa like no they hadn't been broadcasting on youtube shorts before so knowing that congressional aides who knew now we all do um use youtube shorts that's a great example of asking your audience and then yep. providing what they want I, where they want it i have a client who makes snow plows they not the machines that drive them, but just the big hunks of metal in front. Who knew, but there is a website called plowsite.com, which is where guys who do snow plowing go talk about how to get through parking lots faster and which ones clear it better. And there's a whole community. And it was a great little niche community that we did some advertising within. Worst looking website I've ever seen, but it had, it, was there for it was a forum that people engaged in. So getting to the right spot can be really important. Yeah. The uglier, more niche websites you can find, the more useful they'll be. Absolutely. <laughs> Other comment: the uglier, more niche websites you can find, the more useful they'll be. That yep. makes sense. That, we have we have folks in higher education just saying, I'm not going to learn this. I'm going to use my students, give them the stuff and make them do it for yep. you. Yep. Just make sure they understand something about marketing. Because they, you know, sometimes they'll put up videos. You're like, yeah, we don't want to say that. But, you know, <laughs> that, that sort of thing. Uh, one other thing I should talk about with TikTok, Instagram, all those kind of things, this concept of influencers. Everybody hears about it. Oh, influencer marketing. We're going to get that person who's out there in the public and we're going to, you know, give them $10 and every time they post a video or something like that. There's a lot of opportunities within influencer marketing that can be worthwhile. The number of the influencers who have 100,000 plus followers is really small. Um, the ones who are worth it are really limited. And oftentimes, they can post about you once or twice, but if they do it more than that, then people are like, ah, oh, they're just a show for somebody and they won't. So influencer marketing is really hard. It's, it can be a very effective tactic, but it's something that you're gonna be endlessly chasing new influencers, trying to find different ones. Some are gonna work better than others. There are different pay scales, different ways to work it. 
Um, I remember years ago when Vine was a thing and people, that was TikTok way before Vine. Yeah, <laughs> TikTok right. existed. And um, there were some people who got, you know, some things going. You know, Second Life had buildings with it that people paid for. Um, you know, all those kinds of things happen. Um, influencer marketing can be an interesting thing to look at. Um, we probably have some influencers in the room here, at least in the Eclipse space, for sure. They could be a great way to leverage some things, but at the same time, it is very challenging. So um, if you're going to do influencer marketing, um, add some extra time into your planning to really figure out how to do that well. Rick Varner from SCOBY, whom I'm sure some of you know, now I want to know him too, because he suggests that a plow site would need to be USDA compliant. <laughs> Okay. Other comments from the room, from the chat? More smart ass remarks. I like <laughs> always like them. Um, let's just talk for a second about measuring after, or at least plant the seeds. Let's go with the plow theme. Um, you, this doesn't end when it ends, even though everybody thinks it does. No, I love the part of the telling the story is this beginning part of making, writing the story now. Then there's this big moment, but then the afterwards is also a big part of the story as it's I mean my whole thing is ending so the way something ends that's the lens that you're looking back at an experience through right and so I'm always about ending things with grace and also about ending things with numbers being let's not just let this go on April 9th of 2024 right let's as a community look at what it is how we did and communicate about that too. Keep telling that story. So how do we do that? What are we doing using to measure now and building that so that we can measure then? Yeah, well, I mean, so Google Analytics is a great tool for measuring a lot of stuff. There's measurements from all the different platforms that you use. Paying attention to the important metric is really you know, the trick to that. Uh, everybody I talk to loves to talk about bounce rate on Google Analytics, which is a metric that's tied to a single page visit. So you can have 20,000 people visit a page, but if only 100 of them came in and 50 of them left, you have a 50% bounce rate um, because that's just how it's factored. So understanding the data, what's important to you, we talk about in our planning document kind of this idea of defining KPIs, what's important to your business, where that goes, um, and then using the tools to measure those kind of going forward. Um, I think the other thing that you were talking about there was, um, you know, if we're going to have whatever numbers, between 300,000 and a million people in Western New York for this, right? Um, how do we get 100,000 to come back next year? Because they like their experience. They want to come back and visit. You know, if 10% came back, that's a win, right? And so thinking about that, you know, we don't want people who come here to only go, wow, it was really cool when it was dark there for four minutes. Um, I had a great dinner somewhere. I had a nice day. They have a lighthouse up by the lake, whatever they take away, you know, that kind of thing. Um, they have a planetarium, they have different things. That kind of stuff is what you want to be leveraging out so that the people who are coming into all of your communities for this event have some tie back to it where they might want to come back again. Yeah, and remember, if you're capturing their email address, you can relentlessly talk to them about how wonderful the place is after April 8th of 2024. Other observations, thoughts? Trish, you've done a whole lot of um, that kind of leveraging of a community to bring them back, right? You have messaging around that. Like, can you just talk about that just a little tiny bit? Because I've just, I've been watching your messaging for a couple of years and it's really compelling. Sorry to put you on the spot, but you're really good at that, right? The revisiting for, for visit Perry. I mean, it just seems to me, right? You're emphasizing certain things always about Perry County, right? I want to go. I've never been there. So just like what I said yesterday to one of our breakout groups, our four-day festival, on Sunday of our four-day festival is what we call quiet day. And that's when we encourage people to go to our churches, go to our museums, go to our cultural sites, our natural area. Because we kind of want to get them embedded into our community so that after they leave, they can say, hey, that was 
that's a good time. I'm going to go back. And that's all we're at. <laughs> Yeah. I love that idea of a Sunday quiet day. Like, you know, the, you know, let's get everybody with lots of, you know, your fun run, your night run, you know, do yeah, all that stuff on Saturday. Stuff, you know, Friday and Saturday, so now let's just kind of build, yep. get our mindset, uh, get on our Eclipse hat, make sure our gym is clean, make sure our bikes are clean, make sure our shoes are clean, make sure our bikes 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 Remind me what your website is because it was asked in the chat where this message where we can see this kind of messaging that you have. What? Uh, well, uh, Perry uh, Perry County Eclipse dot com and uh, actually we're putting up a new web page on our visit Perry County dot com and uh, Mo Eclipse dot com uh, dot org is our state website. Okay, so our that state is website is where we're going to go and all of the people in the path in Missouri, they can talk about it. We encourage them to write articles like, hey, I'm Perry County, and this is what we have here. And on Eclipse, you know, this is what you can expect and stuff. So they're, we want them to tell more than just about what's going on with the Eclipse. Gotcha. OK. Um, we have another smart ass comment. I always buy my 1,000 or 2,000 glasses on the day after the Eclipse in preparation for the next Eclipse. Mm -hmm. there you go. <laughs> Thank you. I asked for it. Yeah. Um, okay, how are we doing here? Uh, it's we're just about we're just about here. We got another five minutes, really. Well, I was only going to say, in the state of the media this, these days, um, you really have to serve it on the platter. I'm sure all of you kind of know this, but actually, come up here for a second. Yeah. I find this really important, and I want everybody here to hear oh, it. Yeah. Do you mind? Um, Stand near. Thank you. Stand near the microphone. That so basically, <laughs> you, you know, you have to be the reporter, you have to do all the work. If you can shoot the video on your iPhone, it, you know, again, they'll, they'll, they'll excuse bad video as long as you can hear the message or hear the story, uh, provide it for your news stations with the press release, knowing basically what the story, how it's gonna be written for the media. Um, don't go overboard because it's gonna only be one minute worth of time. And basically present it to them, it's more likely it's going to air because the, there's fewer and fewer teams coming out to cover stories. You can send it to, you know, you can have your makeup on and shoot the video, do an interview with Deb, make sure it's a 20 second sound bite, make her do it again if she goes 40 seconds, cut it in half, send that in a we transfer or a Dropbox. It goes right there. You 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 attach the press release, and then there's going to be some 22 year old who has never seen an eclipse, reading and writing, and just sitting at their desk, never ever even probably looking at the video, but that'll go on the news. And so as long as you as long as you care, because you care and you know, you will make it look good. Yeah, about what it is. And so and the media. Um, sorry, say it. Yeah. Repeat that question uh, about the media because yeah. I, I hear you, but so I you, you'll have that so you can refer back to it. It'll be recorded. Um, I didn't take too many notes. Oh, it's being recorded. Yeah, but you know, you never it have is. time to go back for the recording. That's true. But it's a good conversation. Okay, yes. Uh, oh, hang on. If you can mute the conversation oh. you're having, because I can't find you. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, we right. pretty much are done anyway. Oh, Trish had a question. I was a meteorologist because of my team. We had a meteorologist on our team. And he said, Yeah. That was that was almost a year ago. Sure. Two months ago, the TV station contacted us and said, Hey, can we be on your task force? So just keep doing what you're doing, keep beating the drum, they'll come around. Yeah. Just to, just to amplify that idea, 2017, it was hard to get a press except for very local. And then, even then, the local TV stations weren't 
a local anchor who likes astronomy would have you on, but they didn't go better than that. Um, then in the runoff to, uh, in the couple of weeks before, uh, I was doing so much press that frankly, I think the Missouri was sick of saying me. On the Friday before, I was on Science Friday. Ooh, and yeah. on the day of the eclipse, I was broadcasting live on the local news station. So, wow. so they buy an event. Yeah. yeah. We oh. did get a little snippet in USA Today. And I mean, it's like, let's blow that baby up. <laughs> 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 and uh, actually, not to put too fine a point on my stuff, but collect somewhere all media mentions of you all the way leading up to the eclipse during after collected in one place that is part of your story okay thank you very much you. everybody Bye. <laughs>